Good morning, guys. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. I'm here with the wonderful Eloise, who is the founder of Cozy Bee Games and the creator of The Ranch of Rivershine. Say hi, Eloise. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is Eloise Lachrush. Uh I'm a solo developer from Canada, and I'm just really passionate about making uh, cozy simulation games, uh, such as some of my previous games, but especially The Ranch of Rivershine, which I, I'm focused on right now. And that's kind of the game that we're going to be chatting today. Um, I'm going to do my best to pronounce your name correctly, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to have a little jar here. Every time I pronounce it incorrectly, we're just going to chuck it in there. Maybe I can buy a new PC at the end of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <thank you> so. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. No, I think... Because especially like, some of these questions, like I'm gonna like expand on, you know, like a lot. But it's good. We'll it's see. good. We want to hear it all so that we can steal your ideas and do our own games. <laughs> okay. Go for it, honestly. <laughs> all right. So first question we're gonna be asking is: Tell us a little about yourself. You know, like how long have you been developing games for? Do you actually ride horses? Um, you know, have you ever ridden a horse? Like, what mm -hmm. what can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, horses um, and horseback riding is not something that I actively do anymore, uh, unfortunately. But when I was a kid and a teenager, I was just like super into horses and I used to take like lessons. Um, and I've also worked as a horseback riding guide, which was super fun as like a, a summer job when I was a teenager. So uh, I had a lot of experience with horses. But uh, yes, now I'm more focused on the kind of like virtual horses side of things. And yeah, I've been making games for about four or five years maybe now. Uh, and I study like 3D animation in school. So it's something that I, I'm very passionate about. And I've been kind of like working on, you know, like games and digital art and like that whole like industry in general for for all of my 20s, basically. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, did you actually kind of play like horse games as a kid? Um, and if so, kind of which one was your favorite and why? Oh, yeah, I definitely played, I mean, any horse game that I could find, even if, you know, they weren't maybe like that good. I was just super into them. Um, and I used to play especially like browser horse games, uh, like horsey with like a w in it like i <laughs> i pronounced that thing i can't remember exactly i pronounced yeah. that thing horse you will never pronounce it like oh horse. yeah okay <laughs> it's horse. i like that but yeah i love like those types of game but also like pc games uh like the alexandra letterman but like they have so many different names you know like horse games um and also like on my 3ds i had like horse pets or something that i really liked yeah, there's actually like surprisingly a lot of horse games out there. It's just kind of they're not always that good. It's very weird. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the budgets are never got like that high <laughs> for horse games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, kind of what other type of games did you play beyond horse games? Is there anything that kind of that kind of struck your fancy? Um, yeah, I mean, all like simulation and management games, I think in general, like I have a, a soft spot for those. Uh, like I also loved uh, Zoo Tycoon and all the like harvest moon games and i think you can kind of see like those like inspiration also like in my games now you know like i think nintendo dogs was also like one of the games that i consider like an inspiration for the ranch of riverstein um because you know it's like you also kind of like brush your dog you walk your dog like it's a different animal but there's some mechanics that are similar um so yeah, I really just like love any game with animals, I think in general, and like, I think all of my games have animals in them. <laughs> so it's definitely like a strong like theme for me. Yeah, but that's actually definitely something like you said, you know, that reflects like so much of your games. Uh, you know, they're they're very cute, cozy, you know, type of style games. And that mm -hmm. definitely you can see like in those pet style games. Is that kind of why you could like, you know, that's well, actually, that actually answers the damn question, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry, oh, I really... Which one? <laughs> I literally wanted to ask what made you decide to go into that cute and cozy direction specifically? Yeah, no, I, I feel like it's, it is still like a good question because like there's also like other games, you know, like more popular games that are like, like World of Warcraft or like League of Legends that I've played. But I just feel like the cozy sphere, um, especially like when I started like maybe five years ago, was like underdeveloped. And like, I feel like since then, there's like more and more developers that are like going into that and there's more players. And I just think like there's really like a need for growth and games that aren't about, you know, like action adventure and like killing things and like first person shooters. Like, I feel like those games are just like have been dominating 
kind of like the market um but there's like so many other things that could be made into a game you know like such as horses for example um and i feel like especially like as a game designer and a game developer like it's really interesting to kind of like approach new design ideas you know instead of just remaking the same thing instead of being like oh what if i made a game about having horses like what kind of mechanics would be in there like how would it work um what do i want like the player to do or to feel when they're playing the game so um that's also why i want to make those games because it's like something different and i you know it, like it's very creative i yeah. think yeah but that's actually very true what you're saying like um we, we briefly like like earlier spoke about the this idea that games kind of evoke emotion but it's interesting mm -hmm. that you state that fewer like not a lot of games have really been focusing on these cozy style games but they also like evoke a very specific emotion that people are looking for so they say very interesting mm -hmm. that you kind of grabbed a niche that kind of was very barren and you kind of you're starting to slowly fill it up on your <laughs> on steam <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's not, you know, I'm not the only developer making these and I definitely yeah. see like more and more developer joining that trend. And I think it's just like, it's really good. I'm happy to see that. And I'm glad that I get to be part of it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> all of your games are pretty original, uh, at least really from my standpoint. I mean, the come on a capybara spa is kind of out there in my opinion. So uh, <laughs> where do you come up with the ideas for your games? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I... Honestly, I feel like I have so many ideas and I try not to think about that <laughs> because, you know, when you're working on one game, you have to focus on it for, you know, like years, at least like months at a time. And so you have to be very like dedicated to one idea. But honestly, I feel like there's just like a, a thousand different games that I'd love to make. Um, but yeah, for Capybara Spa, actually, it's kind of funny because it was just like on Twitter and like Instagram. And I was just seeing all these artists like making drawings of Capybaras. And I was like, there's such like a fun animal and like I feel like yeah. capybaras have a very specific vibe to them yeah. and I just felt like it was kind of like like it seemed popular like people were into it and I'm like oh it's like unfortunate that there's no games about capybaras you know what if someone made one that's <laughs> so that's kind of why I, I made it <laughs> well I freaking love it I've, it's, it's such a, a like a chill game I like put something on on the back mm -hmm. and then I just kind of like bathe my capybaras it's so chill it's very chill <laughs> and it's very cute yeah <laughs> um, thank you so what is your uh, fear of, like, you kind of briefly, like, touched on this thing that you have to keep a dedication, like, to a specific idea. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, I think, limits, like, part of what you kind of, kind of explore, I think, a little bit, because it takes so long. You know, with an artist, I think it's kind of along the lines of, you know, you pick a painting, you work two weeks on it, and then you pick another painting. So I think game development takes, like, huge time to get to all those ideas. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, kind of, what is your favorite and least favorite part of game development? Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like, uh, the, like, favorite part usually is kind of, like, the, you know, like, game design. Like, the start of it is usually the most exciting, right? Where you, like, sit down and you just imagine everything the game could be and you, like, draw or you come up with, like, mechanics. Like, I think that's really fun for for like people in general um and then going out of that when you actually start development and then you know you have bugs and then ideas that you had are not working out or the art style doesn't look like you thought it would or uh people don't like the game right and it's like uh when you like actually start making it you're like confronted with the reality that you know it's like a little bit harder um but i think like once you kind of get past that and you just like accept that it's hard and that you're gonna have to like persist through that um it's like so rewarding to like actually make a game and release it and have people playing it and enjoy it um so like there's parts of game development that i don't like you know or i'm not like super excited about like for example um optimizing or making like a control rebinding menu like it's very boring right? <laughs> like, there's like it just it has to work and it has to be included <laughs> but it's not exciting but like i still enjoy making those things because uh like my goal at the end of the day is just to make like an experience that people enjoy and you know even those boring parts are like very much needed in that um so there's there's really not too much that i dislike about it that's actually amazing you know the idea that it's actually a very cool thing to kind of say for people who want to go into game development i quite like that you know you're gonna hit walls but if you just kind of keep pushing through those mm -hmm. walls you're gonna get to those parts that you really enjoy doing you know so rather keep on pushing yeah no for sure game development is very hard but it's very rewarding if you if you can do it 
Oh, you're, you're making me want to start game development and I have too many projects <laughs> on my hands. Don't do this to me. <laughs> okay, so uh, on to the main event. Oh, wait, no. I actually have one more question. I've, I, I jumped this one. What is your favorite horse mm -hmm. breed before we get into the game? What is your favorite horse breed? My favorite horse breed? Um, I think it's like just draft horses in general. I feel like they're kind of like giant teddy bears. And um, Clydesdales, I think, are really pretty. Um <gasps> But <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I don't have any of them in in rivers. So I knew like draft horses, I know. Um, because obviously they're like a little less athletic. So if you have a game with like competition, and everything, I feel like it doesn't make sense to focus it. <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, which is like draft horses, but they're yeah, they're to, very cute. You're gonna have to add a discipline and bring in draft horses. That's like the only option. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, just for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, onto the main event it's fun like i think it's it's fun to make a game that isn't like constrained to uh something that is like very like realistic um yeah, yeah. or that like actually happened no <laughs> <laughs> don't base games on the titanic please <laughs> <laughs> there are actually games about the titanic if you can't believe that <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about, about Rons of Rivershine, what it's about, you know, just kind of give us an overview of what the game is. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the Ranch of Rivershine is a horse ranch simulation game where you kind of build up your farm uh, and you buy horses, train them to compete in cross-country competitions. Uh, and cross-country is the only discipline that I have right now in the game it's like the main focus uh and as you compete and progress the game you also get to meet uh villagers so you have the little town of rivershine where you know you can go to like shops and complete quests talk with people um so it's kind of like a mix between stardew valley or like harvest moon like traditional farming games but where all of the mechanics and the ways that you earn money in game and that you progress in game is instead uh centered around horses instead of farming Oh, I, I I love the setup. It it like everyone I think a lot of people have mentioned that it gives like heavy Stardew Valley vibes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There's like um, it's like the the feeling that you have where you're just playing the game. You're like, oh, just one more day, like just this one yeah. more thing, you know. That comes with farming games that I think is really fun. Yeah, yeah, it does actually give that a feel. It's really cool. <laughs> Um, I personally enjoyed it and the uh, response to it has been pretty positive at this stage. I'm very happy for you at that. You know, like I've been getting like so many positive responses from people who said, I got this game and I love it. And I'm here. I understand that people have been contacting you as well, saying that the game is pretty good and they're enjoying it. Yeah, I'm getting uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback <laughs> and a lot of comments, which is good because like really at the end of the day, you know, most of the, the comments are like positive, like people enjoy the game, but obviously it also comes with um you know like bugs or feedback that people are like oh i would like to see this added or like change the game and things like that um which can seem a little like daunting because i'm like oh my god like this is going to be so much work but also <laughs> it's just it's very encouraging to see that people are engaged in your game because if people play a game and then they just don't give you any feedback like they just move on with their life it's because they're not that like invested into it they're not that interested but when people reach out to you and they say oh i would love to see this in the game it means that they're you know like passionate about the game and that they want to play it more and that they want to see more of it so um i even though like in a way i'm like oh my god so much work i just try to take it in a way that's like motivating like people want to play this game like people are excited for it that's actually a great way to look at it because that's exactly i think what's mm -hmm. going on people are just super excited about it and they're like they want to see the game like grow into something that they will love even more you know <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, this is a western game which is actually a pretty rarity with an horse game you clearly love making games about animals but i'd like to ask where did you get the inspiration to specifically kind of make a game about horse games and actually specifically with a western theme yeah um i mean i think horse games in general is something like that i've I've always wanted to make one, like since when I started making games. Um, but I knew that it would be especially difficult to make a horse game. So I was like, I just have to get better at game development and just learn things in general before I try to tackle that. Because I think it would have been uh, a failure. If I started with a horse game, they're just, they're very challenging in a lot of different ways. And, you know, they need like a lot of content to to be enjoyable so i wanted yeah. to wait until i get started on it but it's something that i always wanted to do um and i think western team and just like uh you know setting it in like like western like america 
uh, is just like a little bit different than what has been done previously. But there's a lot of different kind of settings that I would like for horse games. Like, for example, maybe like making it in a more like European, like castles or like manors, something like that, I think would be really cool. Or like in a school, like a horse riding school. Um, so yeah, I, I have some like ideas for different settings, like if I ever made another horse game. But I think Western was like a good place to start and kind of like, um, differentiate myself from from other horse games on the market i also think western is in a lot of ways a bit more casual um in the sense of you know mm -hmm. western riding is not as stiff i think as i'm sorry to every single english writer out there i might actually get lynched for that but uh, it's very <laughs> you know western um, english riding is very structured it's very you know you have to do the dressage you have to do the show jumping you know you have the collections the extensions where as western is i feel a bit more fun and loose and you can i think get away also with a lot more uh, starting i think with a with a uh with a, with a european style game i think would have been i think a little bit more daunting <laughs> and then a western but that's, yeah that's just what i'm thinking but you actually say specifically that you always kind of wanted to make a horse game can i ask kind of why that is um i think it's just because like i grew up playing them and I really liked them but I could also like feel that they weren't like as good as they could have been if that makes sense and oh, yeah. especially like in the last few years um there just hasn't really been like any horse games like on PC um until recently like now I feel like there's a lot of developers that are like starting to get into it but like when I started working on Rivershine there really like wasn't much mm -mm. and you know part of it is like like for myself that I was like I want to make a horse game but part of it is also uh on the like business side of things I was like I think there is a market for this and no one is making a game for these people so like if I can get in and make a game you know it could be like really popular and obviously you know like as a game developer it's like I want to make games that people are going to play and that people are going to be you know really like excited to have um so i'm always kind of like looking for something that is more like unique or different that could work well yeah well, this is really a good one <laughs> from my <laughs> <laughs> okay. i hope so <laughs> so um as a single developer you know I, I you know you're making this game completely on your own well you do have i believe you have a couple of artists mm -hmm. that's doing uh the heads the talking heads for you and the music the music is stunning in this game by yes. the way that that guy is he, he makes thank you stunning music but um, yeah the composer is i've worked with him on a few different games so like he made the soundtrack for lemon k2 and um he's very good and i love the like vibe that he's giving to River Shine with his music. Oh, it is it is cozy beyond cozy. It is, I love it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so most of your games are, you know, I'd, I'd call them contained. You know, they don't kind of sprawl out mm -hmm. into the open world. You know, they're they're cute little cozy games. You know, Capybara is like literally only 400 megabytes compared to I think the four or five gigs. You know, that is Ranch of River Shine. <laughs> so I mean, this game game has weather, it has seasonal changes, a big open world, lots of elements to consider code and design, and that can kind of you know you know not work well off of each other. So kind of what made you decide like one day to kind of step out of that comfort zone and make a game that is quite literally I think about 10 times the size of the other games that you've made mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's uh it's definitely scary <laughs> to <laughs> kind of like get into like a big game like that um but I I knew it was going to be bigger and I think it's something that I was building up to you know like making my other games I wanted to get like specific like skills I wanted to get experience uh making and releasing games so that I could build up to making a game like River Shine um and you know I think it's also about like setting different like expectations for myself because I've had very like short and like fast development cycles for my other games like for example uh Lemon Cake took me like uh, nine months from when I started to when I released it wow. and Capybara Spa was three months so like they're smaller games and I made them faster right which can be like a lot easier because you don't lose motivation as much when you're working on a smaller game right because it just like you see results very quickly um, but I think it was kind of like a mindset with River Shine that like when I started I was like all right like this is it I'm gonna be working on this for for like years like this is like the big project you know that I've been um working up to so actually that's uh, the thing what has been the biggest tight uh, sorry <laughs> what has been the biggest <laughs> challenge for this title you know seeing as the scope is so big like what is the thing that kind of hindered you the most or that you struggled with the most I would say the horse controller just like 
you know like running around in the horse overall it's been like very challenging to um make it in a way that it fits like a lot of people's play style um and you know even in the game there's like two different camera modes like two different ways that you can control your horse and um some people you know they like only one of the like two different modes some people they don't like either of them and it's like it's just like very challenging i think to make the horse riding like satisfying for for everyone and it's something that you know i started working on that like at the very start and it's like changed and been improved like so many times along the way and it's still going to be changed in the future too so that you know it works for more people the biggest challenge that i see in the future uh when the game enters early access is just going to like be like organized in how new features are released um and make sure that you know the game like stays playable like through different updates and just balancing all the different mechanics together you know because you're going to be able to earn money from breeding horses and like selling the foals from catching wild horses from winning competitions from quests from training horses and like making sure that all of these fit together and are you know like valuable in their own way and you know give you like a good progression in the game like i it's just a lot of different things that have to work together yeah yeah, yeah. it's actually something it's quite refreshing um it sounds odd but it's refreshing to hear like you know a developer kind of focusing on quality you know not quantity so many i think a lot of developers today they kind of focus on i want to make it as big as possible i want to add as many features as possible and that's one of the things mm -hmm. where they kind of you know fall flat you know the one thing that i'm kind of grateful about with your game specifically is that you decided not to add a bunch bunch of different breeds which means that mm -hmm. the nuance of the horse can be focused on and doesn't need to be you know watered down or kind of you know jippoed in order to have you know 10 million horse breeds it, I, I always say you know oh god sorry I think my dog just barked <laughs> but um <laughs> I always say you know that it's it's like I said you know quality versus quantity um and I'm gonna drag star stable into this sorry star stable <laughs> but they have like how many horse breeds do they have at this point 200 300 and every horse is exactly the same, except for like minor visual variations. And like I said, I'm just mm -hmm. very glad that that's something that personally from my end, that you're doing one horse breed and you're doing the best that you can with that, because we're going to have, I think, a little bit more in-depth gameplay from what I'm seeing so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely like a big decision, but that's something that I did very like early on. And I've always been like clear about that with myself. And, you know, I've tried to be like with players too, that is just like, it's just one breed and we're gonna have like a lot of different like horse uh like coat colors and patterns and markings and like hairstyles so i think that like still changes it up quite a lot but just one horse model um because having multiple breeds can really like add a lot of difficulty um on the like you know like programming and technical side and i don't think it necessarily adds that much to the gameplay right like Obviously, like yeah, getting yeah. new horses is fun, but it doesn't like change the game or give you like new features necessarily, like things to do. It's just something that you get and that you have. Um, and I think <laughs> doing that is having like multiple horse breeds is really popular and more like pay to win games because they get to like sell new horses for real money. And, yeah. then, you know, like, and I expected it to be something that was requested more often, but I actually haven't seen like that many comments uh, about like horse breeds in general. So I don't think it will be that much of an issue. So let's go into the, uh, to the uh, like Ranch of River Shine a little bit, you know, more about the world and stuff like that. So um, mm -hmm. there are a ton of characters in this game. Uh, I actually love characters and stories, but uh, tell us a little bit about them and tell us your favorite one. I actually, personally, I adore Madeline. I think she's a very cute character. <laughs> yeah, um, I I mean, I love all of them, honestly. And uh, there's five, uh, like, villagers in the demo and there's going to be 10 of them that are planned at least for now uh in the full race game so yeah there's still like a, a few more that um players are going to meet in the game and i don't know i feel like i really try to make kind of like unique and original designs for all of them um to really make them like feel different give them different personalities and like aesthetics and everything uh and i'm really happy with how they turned out like the the artist who drew the the characters is really talented um my favorite one I don't know. I think right now in the demo, River is probably my yeah, favorite. Yeah, um, so cool. And 
yeah she's just like i don't know like a really like fun and cheerful <laughs> character um and i do want to go more in depth with them like later on i'm going to add some sort of like friendship system uh Ooh. where they kind of like tell you more about themselves and like their stories and things like that when you talk to them um and just have like more quests with them in general so it's definitely going to go more in depth with with the villagers oh i actually love that that is i love like like those types <laughs> of games where you kind of build up relationships mm -hmm. and you learn more about them and oh now i'm even more excited thank you <laughs> <laughs> so um and like i said earlier i adore stories uh so this one has actually me ridiculously intrigued oh intrigued where did words go so um <laughs> it feels very grounded but it just adds kind of a touch of magic there at the end okay, can you kind of expand a little on the story or kind of give us a taste of what's to come if you can <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the story I feel like is it's a bit difficult to balance because it's obviously like it's a simulation game. It's not like a story driven game. So I want the story to be more of a, you know, like background and something that you like actively have to like continue doing like every day, you know, because I want players to be able to kind of like role play or do like what they want to do in the game um, in advance in the story when they're ready for that. So that's why it's going to be more of like a a slow like development um but i feel like it's fun to have a story that's not just you know oh like you were given like a farm from like your grandpa or something <laughs> it's like that has just been done to death i think in farming games yeah. and i just didn't really want to go for for that kind of like starting story and i think uh you know having like the statues and i don't like necessarily want to like spoil too much but it's basically that you're going to find um different statues uh like horse statues yeah. through the world in rivershine and each of them is going to give you like something special and when you uncover like all of them uh you're going to get something extra special like at the end to conclude the story okay, well. um but yeah it's just kind of like as you like explore the world and like unlock new areas you're going to be able to be to progress further further in that oh i love it i love it I, I like the fact that it's not uh a linear story you know it kind of has a more sprawling story and you can do it kind of at your mm -hmm. own pace because i think you know it's i'm gonna bring stardew valley up again but that that is kind of the charm in that game as well is the fact that you don't have a time pressure to kind of finish everything it slows it down and you do it at your own pace and you slowly get to know people and that that's actually i think kind of what you're going for with ranch of rivershine yeah for sure and there is like this kind of like main story but like i also want to add a lot of like side quests you know like with each like specific villager maybe you'll have something to like do for them and like uncover some, something for them for like their own specific story so um having like more things outside of that main storyline i think is also going to add a lot more depth to the world but uh, like i said i'm ridiculously intrigued i really love the story so far and i really just want to play more and see what happens <laughs> okay so uh, the statue is very original and it kind of gives the option to boost some horses up and keep them like kind of keep them for longer so if you have a low tier horse and you go to the statue it'll boost some of you know if you eventually go to the statue it'll boost some of its uh points up so it it essentially means I will be able to keep my first horse forever. I think this is the first time this has happened in a horse game. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> I, kinda, I just have to ask, like, where did you come up with that idea? Because I absolutely love it. I mean, I just think it's really important. And like, that's definitely something that was missing from like other horse games. Um, because usually like your starter horse, like your first horse, it's the one that you're going to have like the longest and that you like experience like the beginning of the game with. And I, you know, a big part of horse games is just like the bond that you form with your yeah. horses like a lot of it is just like how you feel about your horses so um you know even if it's like yes you could replace it with a better horse and it would be fine but like that's not you know that's not good for like your feelings no. i guess no it isn't <laughs> and that's just something that i i'm prioritizing like i just want people to like feel good and be happy when they're playing the game so it was important uh, for me like from the start that the starter horse can be kept uh, for the whole game and can have like 100% stats but it has to be possible and also like for example if you catch like a wild horse or you breed a horse and you really like their coat color their coat patterns or something but their stats are bad then you could also like boost them up to be like really good later on in the game and uh, we have the statue that does that but I'm most likely going to implement other ways to do it too to like fit different people's play style like maybe you don't really like the statue mechanic and you would rather do it in another way mm -hmm. um like for example in in the meadows there's an area that's called like the holiday field and you can't use it right now but um what I have planned with that is that in the future you could put your horses there 
and they would be kind of like on vacation and while they're there they uh, would recover potential points oh. so you could put your horse there for like you know like two weeks in game or something and then they would have some more potential so then you can train them and get further with them um, and obviously it would be like limiting because it takes time in game to do it and you could only place like one horse there at a time so you have to like choose very specifically which horse you want right so that's the balance is like giving the possibility to do it but making it not too easy either so but the field is also a cool idea so you're gonna have the all of these different elements i quite like that because it's gonna you know mean we can actually play it in a way that you know we're gonna enjoy kind of in a way you know i love that that's actually really mm -hmm. cool <laughs> yeah i mean there's a lot of like different things in the game that you know like i base a lot of my decisions on that like for example like the horses can't die um yeah. it's it's not realistic but i just think horses dying is not fun and i don't want to include it <laughs> Or, you know, like things like that. So. <laughs> no one is complaining. Like, really, no one is complaining. Yeah. <laughs> as, a, as a lot of people have noted, myself included, uh, one of... Where the buck am I? Wait. <laughs> did, did I skip a question? No, no, I did not skip a question. <laughs> so kind of the, the statues are a little bit magical. So are there going to be any more magical elements? Or uh, kind of what type mm -hmm. of theme are you specifically planning for the story specifically? Well, we did kind of cover this, I think. Mm -hmm. But let's rather ask the question, will there be any other magical elements beyond the horse statues? Yeah, um... That's kind of tricky because I feel like a little bit of magic is fun, but I don't want to uh, have, for example, like magical horses. Like we're not going to do like unicorns or um, like I forgot what they're called, like horses with like wings and Pegasus. things like that. Like I don't want to go Pegasus. Yeah, I don't want to go that far into it. Um, but I feel like having a little bit of magic sometimes is just a fun way to like implement mechanics in the game right like the statues for example like it's just like oh just a little bit magical um and i do have a few other things planned like that but um it's uh from a character from like a villager that hasn't been like revealed yet and that uh, you're gonna unlock like later on in the game and i would want him to be a kind of like astrology like potion making Ooh. character um and i think having potions yeah it like it kind of brings the ability to do like certain things that people are, are like already requesting um you know like maybe you could uh change the gender of your horse with like a potion or you could like change like re-roll like their coat to like remove a marking or something yeah. like just like small things basically to change your horse um since there's no like horse creator in the game right and like all the horses are randomly generated from like the auction house or like breeding and like let's say you have a horse that is just like almost perfect you just want to yeah. change like this one little thing about them then maybe there would be like a potion that you could use for that um to kind of like bridge that gap of of being able to like make the horse yourself and obviously like it's it's not realistic it's like a little bit magical but i feel like it's not too crazy that yeah, it still no. fits within the game but um okay so you're not essentially going to be turning this into the ranch of hogwarts shine that's essentially what you're saying <laughs> no <laughs> damn <laughs> That's perfectly fine. <laughs> so, um, as many people have noted, myself included, uh, one of the most difficult aspects of um, designing a horse game are actually the horse animations. I'm actually quite curious to mm -hmm. hear if you agree with that, and if so, why do you think it is so challenging to kind of animate horses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, horses have a lot of legs. <laughs> to anime, compared to That's it. It's like just the legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> I mean, compared to like human characters, right? Which uh, mostly game developers are used to animating bipeds, right? Um, it's it's a lot easier when you only have two legs, and when you have four legs and all the different gates that horses, you know, can have. Um, it's a lot of animations, and it's it's difficult. Yeah, it takes a while, um, and obviously, I can't do you know kind of like a mocap yeah <laughs> for my animation like i can't have like a real horse to do that unfortunately i'm just working you know from my apartment <laughs> um but it's definitely something that i want to polish because a few people have like noticed the animation pointed out like i think especially like the trot and the canter could be like improve a little bit and i will definitely yeah. um get back to that um but yeah it's it's something that is kind of like a work in progress and there's also like a balance between animations being realistic and animations that actually work in the game um like for example like one animation that is you know like very like it looks like the horse is sliding is when you kind of like just turn on yourself 
Oh, yeah, yeah. And the thing is that it's not like super realistic for a horse to just spin on like where they are exactly without moving forward, right? Like usually you, you'd start walking and then you turn, um, but limiting the game to that and not allowing the player to kind of like spin on like where they currently are uh, is very like not fun for the controls and it feels very like frustrating and it feels bad to control so uh, sometimes the animations are a little bit less realistic or you can see that you're sliding or like it it's not like perfect but it if it wasn't that way it would make the game frustrating and i usually prioritize like controls and game feel over um you know the the animations but it can still be improved a bit more but some of it you know like for example like you can see when you're like walking uh that the horse is kind of like sliding on the ground because the yeah. movement speed is faster than the animation um but <laughs> that's kind of like difficult to balance especially because your horse's uh like speed skill can be improved so at some point your horse can walk really fast right like when you improve their walk speed but i can't necessarily make the walk animation be just like extremely fast because then it would just have this like walk that is like a spider you like it's just like moving super fast on the ground and it would it would be worse basically if i did that so um it's it's kind of a it's a balance you know between a lot of different things well i always say um fun will always out outweigh realism for me in a game because it's about having fun mm. you know, if the realism is hurting the game then rather have it out but i would like to see mm -hmm. spider horse i'm not gonna lie <laughs> have even more legs <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not an animator. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, uh, speaking of the visuals, the colors and visuals, I find absolutely gorgeous. I think it's very warm and Thank you. It, I, yeah, I, I love it. It's, it's very, um, inviting. I think that's also the word I'm looking for. And of course, cozy, <laughs> but, um, do you actually, it's for interest sake, you know, seeing as you do make this game like yourself, uh, do you actually make all these assets yourself as well? No, I haven't. Um, the especially the environment assets. Mm. That's something that I bought on the Unreal Marketplace. Um, because I did at the start of the game like make all the environment assets myself, and it just it takes forever. Yeah. And like I, you know, like could do it. Um, and it's something that I feel like I've done before. Um, but for this game, I decided that the world was just too big and it would like save myself a lot of time to have, you know, things that are more generic, like trees or grass or, um, you know, like fences. It's like, it's not very like specific to the game necessarily. So like for those things, um, I did make the assets myself, but then anything that is very game specific, like obviously the horses and then all the like horse tack and the equipment, uh, the characters, the furniture, the items. Um, that are like models that I need to be like something specific, then I make those myself. Um, and it allows me to like focus more on like certain things when I can just say myself sometime with like the yeah. environment. Yeah. <laughs> but doing it's it's difficult to do the to like mix that together and make sure it looks good because obviously it can look like a different art style, right? Like my own art style and then the assets I already bought, like I have to make sure that everything matches and the color balance is good and you know, like the environment is like seamless with those. Um, so that's a little bit challenging, but I think I got it figured out and no one has really like pointed out like, oh, those two things look odd together. So I think that it's okay. <laughs> um, and I'm glad that I, I can, you know, speed that up a bit because making environments is just like, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work for sure. Yeah, I've actually, I'm actually quite surprised that you say that you bought assets. I was under the impression that you'd made everything mm -hmm. because it, it flows so seamlessly. So I was, I'm actually a little surprised you say that you bought assets because I'm like, wow, it, it doesn't look like it. You did a very good job of kind of blending those two together. Well, from what I could see in any case so far. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's the kind of thing that, you know, having, um, like, let's say if you buy assets and you can't do like 3 dr at all or like textures, uh, it might be a little bit harder to use them because you don't know like how to change the assets to fit into your game. But like if I buy something, I can kind of just like tweak them or rework them so that they actually like fit in the game, right? So that's why they kind of like, they might not be like exactly as how I bought them. So I can like change them up a bit, but obviously just changing something instead of making it from scratch is uh, it's a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so um, you say that, uh, just for interest sake about the horses, just again, real quick, you say that the mm -hmm. horses will have personalities. So uh, for the demo, this was unfortunately not included, but can you give us an idea mm -hmm. of the types of personalities to be added and kind of how that's gonna work? Yeah, for sure. Um, so 
I have about like a dozen different personality traits uh, that I would like to add in the game. And I think how I wanted to work for the horses is that they would have, let's say like at most three of them at once. And it would be like when you buy a horse, maybe they already have one. Um, or when you breed horses together, the foal could inherit some of their parents' personality traits. And then when they grow up or when you train them, uh, they could gain new ones up to three. And uh, the examples of like what these could be is like, for example, they could uh, be trained faster in specific skills so maybe a horse would like gain endurance faster or jump skill faster uh, or they could be like an affectionate horse that gains trust faster for you um, and then have uh, some like traits that impact the gameplay more uh, like for example they would be able to eat uh, like treats twice a day so they can gain more energy daily uh, or they would be like fluffy so like their mane and their tail just grows faster like once I add that in the game uh, they're always going to be like getting long hair like really quickly uh, or maybe they would be like a maternal horse where like the foal just inherits more of the skill of the parent so they like transfer more of their skills to foal um, just like small things like that I don't want any of them to be negative because I don't want you to have a horse that you really like and then they end up having like a negative trait and you kind of just like stuck with that um, so it's just going to be kind of like a little like bonuses or a little change to gameplay uh, you also say that horses will be able to get sick. I, I don't think I've ever heard so much mm -hmm. joy in people's voices for saying a horse can get sick. <laughs> but uh, will there be like specific diseases, ailments with specific cures? Or is it going to be a little bit more simplistic than that? Essentially, you know, what can go wrong and how are we going to be able to like treat our horses when they do, you know, go get sick? I, to start off, I have to say the like sickness and like the illnesses that horses can have most of it is going to be made up and like how it's treated like this is not going to be like realistic at all because uh obviously like horse illnesses in real life are often like very serious and difficult to treat you know and it's like it is not fun when you need like a vet for your horse so <laughs> to have it in the game i'm going to make up things a lot um but you know like obviously i'm trying to like take inspiration from like real life things but making them a little bit like smaller right oh. and like simpler um like for example if you leave your horse outside uh overnight in winter while it's snowing and they don't have a blanket they could catch a cold and uh if you go out on like specific trail rides and it's like a swampy area you would have to put like insect repellent on your horse before going or else they can get uh what's it called like mud fever or yeah. something like that um so just like small you know like things like equivalent to a cold um and then you can just like treat your horse with the vet and obviously if they're not treated they would like lower their energy or it would mean that you can't sell them you can't do like competitions with them so in general it's just to kind of like make the player focus on like how they're taking care of their horse based on like the the, the seasons the weather the kind of like activities that you're doing with them um and just be like a little bit more mindful of them because i think it makes the horses feel more alive uh when you have to be like attentive to them and um the veterinarian is also going to be helpful for like one's breeding is in the game um because for example i'd like uh to have some sort of like you know like potion or like remedy that you can give horses to like increase their fertility so that they get pregnant faster and after that the vet maybe have some sort of like um what's it called like when you do like a, a scan like on the belly uh, to see ultrasound. like the gender of ultrasound. the foal or like yeah like an ultrasound i would like to do something like that if possible oh, yeah. so the veterinarian is not gonna be like just for illnesses but also for like like breeding and kind of like bonus things like that that is i love that like wow i love that <laughs> it's gonna be so cool <laughs> But, um, okay, so yeah. you actually did briefly touch on breeding, and uh, breeding is going to be uh, like uh, it's like a planned mechanic for the game. So I actually have two questions here. Um, firstly, you know, can you kind of share a little bit about you know what the mechanics are going to be like? Are there going to be any surprises? And uh, is it going to be like genetically realistic, or kind of what approach are you going for here? Uh, yeah, the breeding is going to be a really big part of the game, and I I think a lot of people are excited for it. I'm excited to add it in the in the game. Um, it's gonna be like how it's gonna work basically is that like you pick two of your horses that you want to breed together mm -hmm. and then every day that they spend in the kind of like fertility picture uh, pasture they have a chance of getting pregnant 
And once your mare is pregnant, uh, it's going to be for like a certain period of days in games, so, like maybe for like a week in game, you're going to have like a pregnant mare, right? Yeah. And so while your mare is pregnant, it like limits certain activities like competitions, but you can still ride them um, and like train them and things like that. Uh, so you have to be kind of like mindful of how you manage like your herd and which like horses you want to have pregnant, which horses you want to do for competition. Like I think it adds a layer of kind of like yeah. management, right, to have that. Um, and then after that, like your horse gives birth and you have a horse that is going to be like in the full stage for, let's say like two weeks in game, uh, where you can just like feed them and brush them and things like that. And later on, I'm going to add training, but not initially like for the foals. Um, so yeah, like that's like, just like a quick overview of how mm -hmm. it's going to work. Uh, and for the genetics, it's, it's not going to be realistic just because like, I don't really want to get into that and I think it's fun to have some coats that aren't necessarily like uh you know like it, you don't have a horse or I don't think so at least you don't have like a horse breed that can have like every single coats that exists in your universe but in Rivershine it, there is <laughs> the horse can just have any coats no, I, I, um, <laughs> I actually like that approach more because it's, uh, I, I don't know, I know the genetic thing is very interesting, but sometimes I just want to put two horses together and get a horse, you know? I don't want to mm -hmm. have to go look at a chart yeah. and figure out what the hell am I supposed to do to get a horse breed <laughs> or a horse color. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, I personally know just like a very like surface level about like horse genetics so i would also have to like learn a lot about it um to implement it in the game but it is basically just going to be simplified um and i i mean i can explain it i i feel like it might make sense for people who've played the game already like they're going to understand what i mean a bit more um but basically each horse has a coat color which can be like a chestnut or a bay or a rowan horse and they can also have a coat pattern like Aurora or Tabiano or the Splash horses right now in the game. And so when you breed two horses together, it's going to pick, uh, you know, like 50-50, one of the horse uh, coat colors. But for example, if it picks like a chestnut, the chestnut coat color has a lot of different color, right? Like it could be um, a lighter chestnut or a flaxen chestnut and all that. So it's going to get one of the, the like colors from that type. Right. So like if you get chestnut, it's going to be like at random one of the like six coat colors that are part of the chestnut type. Oh, well, that's that actually pretty, I think that's pretty <laughs> logical. I, th I find that, you know, right. I think that's something anyone is going to be able to kind of understand after a couple of breedings. But I get it. You know, people yeah. want realistic genetics, but it's really not a deal breaker for me at all. I think just just keep it like logic as the way that you're doing it. It makes mm -hmm. perfect bloody sense. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see how like for people who know genetics, yeah. like it's very satisfying to see it in a game, right? And like it feels yeah. like you can use all of your knowledge for the game. And like, that's cool. Um, but I would assume that like over 90% of people who are going to play this game probably don't know that much about like horse genetics. Yes. And so I, I feel like going for something logical is a bit more player friendly also. Yeah. Okay, so there are going to be seasonal changes in this game. Uh, so this will, of mm -hmm. course, have an effect on farming, but I understand it will also affect the rest of the world. You know, horses might be quicker to get sick. So as you mentioned before, you know, if you don't put a blanket on them, they might get sick in the, in the paddock. And lakes will freeze over. This was something that you mentioned like way early in development. But uh, tell us a little bit about the different seasons and how those will impact the game, how the changings of the seasons will impact the game. Um, I mean, I think the main change with the season is just like visually, like it's very like satisfying and it kind of like, it makes the game feel a bit like more fresh when like, you know, all the like colors, like the color of the trees, the color of the ground, it like changes. Um, and, you know, the music is also going to change with the season. So I feel like it helps to kind of keep it new. Um, and all of the like other maps, you know, so like your your ranch is going to, you know, for example, like in winter is going to turn like white and there's going to be like snow falling, but like also the town and the other maps that you explore are going to change with the seasons. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I wanted to implement with that is, um, like as you said, like a lake freezing over is maybe like unlocking different areas depending on the season. So like, for example, you'd have an area that's like blocked off by a river that's too deep to cross. But then when it freezes over, you can go to the other side, but only in the winter, you know? And um, I would like to design something similar for each season that gives you access to something special to change it up a little bit. That is, I, you come up with such original ideas. I'm going to be honest with you. That's amazing. <laughs> It's it's really cool. I just love it. It's so 
Man, I'm just getting more and more excited for this game. Can you please finish it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, I love that. It's a no, like you said. It, it makes the uh, it makes the world more dynamic. It makes it more interesting. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like exploration is going to be such a big part of of Arusha and Dan. You know, with, like all the different areas that you can unlock. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's like a little bit difficult to make exploration feel like uh interesting or like valuable to do like after you've gone like once, right? But yeah. then if uh, the maps changes with the season then you have like a reason to go back you know that you're like oh yeah i have to go back there like once like that river freezes over in winter or something you know or like yeah. obviously like a villager is probably going to tell you or like give you a hint for it because i don't think people would just like know <laughs> <laughs> so um my actually my favorite part of this entire game and i think i have said this to you is the auction house it's it's i love mm -hmm. it it's the mo it's for me personally the most fun and original part um and i i've actually played a lot of horse games and uh, i've actually never seen an auction house being implemented i mean i actually play like horse racing games as well and i haven't seen one implemented and i kind of want to know where did you get the idea for adding an auction house because i love it <laughs> It came from me wanting to make it feel like more personal mm. uh, when you're like buying a horse, you know, instead of just being from a menu. Because, for example, like in the game, we have like shops, right, where you can just buy like apples or something. And it would have been so much easier and faster to do something similar for the horses, right, <laughs> where you can just scroll and buy like, you know, like a bay horse or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, but that is way less fun, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to create a system in the game where you can buy horses, where you can like see them. And, you know, you're like, it, it also makes it like meaningful, like each horse you look at, you have to like consider it because if you pass, it's not coming back. And you have like a limited amount of horses that you can see. Um, so I feel like it's just important in game to make things, to make it feel like everything is like, you know, like it's important. Like your decisions matter and like yeah. what, you, what you do has like a real impact in the game. Um, and I just like the auction house. But yeah, honestly, it was a lot of trouble to, to set it up and make it work. And it was buggy for a long time. Oh no. <laughs> but it works really well now and it's, it's super fun. <laughs> Um, and I would like to expand on it in the future. I'm not sure like how much I'll do it, but like possibly having horses maybe like that are like sick. Like yeah. maybe there could be like different types of auction house, I... right? Like where you can buy like rescue horses or foals or something like that. I literally wrote this down. I wanted to say this to you. I'm like, please <laughs> add sick horses to this. It's going to be so cool. <laughs> but I'm actually thinking you should make like the potential for sick horses should not be visible. So you're going to buy this mm. rescue horse and you're not going to know you know, is it going to be a good horse or a bad horse? And maybe you get a bad horse or you get a great horse from this rescue horse and then it's going to be your best horse forever. That's right true. That stuff. is a really cool idea. Yeah, to just like hide hide the stats and it's a little bit like gambling on horses. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you love the coat color. You just feel very bad for this poor mm -hmm. animal. You're like, oh, let's go. And then it's like, oh, it's such a good horse. But I, I really love the auction house. But it's a, I, I've said this in, um, in I'm sorry, I'm bringing horse tails in, but I kind of said that in that game as well. There's something extremely special about about selecting a horse that is pre-designed. I really can't put my finger on why exactly. I need mm -hmm. to think about that. But um, I think it could be because you're kind of fighting for something that you want. Whereas, or you have mm -hmm. to buy or you have to work for something that you want. Whereas, where you create a horse that is exactly what you wanted, then you just get what you wanted. Yeah, no, for sure. It, and it's it's a big design decision to make, like whether to include a uh, like, horse creator menu in the game or not and that is like a downside for some people like they you know like i've seen comments like this like oh i just wish i could like make the horse and i completely get that and like i understand why most games include it because people just want a horse that looks uh, a specific way um you know like a horse that they had in real life or just like a type of horse that they think is really pretty um and i you know i think it's sad that it's like a downside but also for me that's like a big um part of what i think makes up like the game's personality or like yeah. what makes the game unique is that getting a horse with like a, a coat color or something that you really like is like a goal in the game right mm. either from like the auction house that you're just like trying to like get lucky and find a horse that you like or when like catching wild horses you know and you have to like get this one specifically that you really like or from breeding so like um unlocking different coat colors and coat patterns is going to be one of the like one of the things that you work toward in yeah. the game and i think when you work towards something it also makes it a lot more valuable when you end up getting it compared to just like having it from the start exactly as you want it to be um but i can see the like pros and cons for that feature for sure yeah i just think that that like you said you know they're like working for it fighting for it 
you know, that's, I think that places a lot more value, as you said, you know, quite clearly that mm -hmm. it makes what you're getting so much more valuable and just going out mm -hmm. and just making it. So um, pole bending and barrel racing uh, were two sports that you mm -hmm. had planned for the game. Now, I kind of made a little error in my video. I sincerely apologize. And I said that this would have been part of the completed game version. I said that uh, pole bending and barrel racing are going to be added. But I spotted in your frequently asked questions that you make it clear that cross country will currently be the only discipline. Um, so are there plans to kind of add barrel racing, pole bending or any other disciplines? Um, uh, so kind of what... Well, yeah, and oh, sorry, and what made you decide to remove those for the time being? There we go. Yeah, so it's this is kind of really complicated. It's something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, but to start off, I guess I could say I do still want to add bear racing and pole bending, and probably like fairly quickly, like it might even be like available at the start of early access, oh. um, because I really like it and I think it's fun and it uses like the flexibility stat in the game, and you know it's like a different type of gameplay, and people have been asking about it. But the reason why I say that the main discipline is gonna be cross country is because if you if you actually think about it, right? Like barrel racing is very simple and very boring. <laughs> and the like layout, right? You can't really like expand on it. You just enraged like the entire Western community. <laughs> <laughs> like in real rich. life. It's like, it's a very fun like thing yeah. to do, but like in a game, because cross country, right? You can have like different um, obstacles layout. You can put it in like different environments. You can have different heights for the obstacle. And you know, you have like tight turns or really like long stretch where you have to gallop. And it's like, I can make, you know, like I have 24 different uh, competitions that are planned for the game. Like there are four in a demo, so they're gonna be 24 total. So, and I can make all of those and they're all gonna be like different, right? Yeah. But bear racing is just, three <laughs> barrels and it's always the same layout and it's like just flat and it takes about like 10 seconds to do right so it's just like too simple to expand on and make it like an important part of the game yeah but i would still want to include it where it's like for example every like sunday or like there would be like a festival in the game or something where you can go and do bear racing and then like for a day you could do the competition and earn money from it but like making it like time limited and not something that you do every day i think is what is going to make it fun because if it's something that you just did every day on repeat if everyone would hate it like it wouldn't be like a fun part of the game so that's why i like kind of removed it from the main disciplines because it's going to be kind of like a side a little side thing you know that's actually fair i i i'm actually glad that it's not getting entirely removed because i quite liked it but yeah that actually mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense because it's such a some it's a like you said you know in real life barrel racing is probably a ton of fun i've never done it but yeah <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun <laughs> but uh in a game yeah i mean you're literally just i mean i've played this in star style but you literally just go around three barrels and you know that's it like yay cookie <laughs> yeah there's just there's not enough like complexity in it um to do like anything with it in the game but uh it is something maybe that i could like i was thinking i could just invent a new discipline you're like let's make up something new that could maybe mix like jumping cross country and yeah. kind of like agility isn't like, like bear a, racing isn't there like something like western equitation or something like that i th am i speaking yeah am i speaking crazy now where <laughs> you kind of do like it's no no it's a it's a real way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but you have like I, I'm, I don't know if this is the correct term but you have like an arena you have little jumps you have to go around you have to go around barrels you have to open gates or is that just plain horse mm -hmm. i think something like that could be fun um or maybe doing something like that but like for the foals for example so like you would lead them oh. through like little obstacle courses and like desensitize them i think that would be like super cute i just i don't know how complicated it's gonna be to yeah. implement but um possibly something like that for the the full training those are actually um like currently all of my questions uh, i still have one like for the very end but uh for now let's kind of go into kind of what the people have been asking because i kind of asked a couple of people to kind of ask questions and you know here are some of them so i kind of saved some of my own questions for here so that they could ask it <laughs> so um okay. let me just grab it here because i have their names oh my God. where help where's my list of names <laughs> Okay, so that was the clothing. Yeah, that's good. Oh, for the love of all that is good and holy. Why did I not save it when I had the chance? Because life is difficult and I hate my life. How does that sound? Emma Wagner. That seems like very dramatic for <laughs> losing just the names. I am a tr you have watched my videos. I'm just checking. You know I'm dramatic. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, here we go into the final couple of questions from uh, actual people, like from my channel and people who are quite curious about your game. So the first question that we're mm -hmm. going to be asking is uh, from Cheesy Chelsea, and she's asking, will there be DLC for this game? Um, no, so I, I'm not planning on releasing any more like paid content uh, once the game is released. So the game is probably going to be in early access for a while. And during early access, I'm going to add all of the like contents that I want to add. And you can see uh, kind of like an overview of that with the game's roadmap. Um, and once everything is added and once the game is running as smoothly as possible, <laughs> uh, I'm going to fully release it um, and there won't be any more like pay content after that. So if I add things, it's just going to be part of the game. Okay, awesome. Okay, so uh, next question. This comes from, uh, uh, this one comes from Lily. Will there be romance or marriages with NPCs similar to Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a question that I, I've i gotten quite a few times already. Uh, <laughs> I'm not currently planning on adding romance in the game because it's not really like the direction I want to go in. Um, but I, I know that the, some of the NPCs are very cute in the game and that <laughs> people are going to like them. Uh, I do want to add some sort of like friendship or like affection to them, as I said before. Mm. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be like marriage or super like in-depth uh, like romance in the game. Uh, there might be in the future that like you can do more things with the villagers. Like for example, maybe they could come and visit your ranch and do like some tasks around the stables if you're gonna good enough friends with them and things like that. Mm. Um, but that's that's like the most that I have planned for now. Okay, so um, the next question comes from Amber. Uh, we I did actually ask you this before, but uh, <laughs> she wants to know: mm -hmm. Will there be chickens on our farms? <laughs> <laughs> So possibly, I, I don't want to make any promise for that, but it's something that I considered like adding other farm animals that you could raise on your ranch. Um, probably things like sheep, goats, uh, chickens that you'd be able to buy and then you could sell, you know, like produce from them, like milk or eggs uh, to make a little bit of extra money on the side. Uh, I think it would also really be really cute if you could have some of them be like uh, in the pasture with the horses so they could kind of like be... Uh, like linked to a horse and be like the the pet of a horse basically to like raise their happiness um or just to make the pasture a little bit more cute if you have some goats in there too but i'm not sure if that would make the pasture too crowded <laughs> depending on how many horses and how many like additional animals you have in there yeah. um so i'll look into that in the future but it would probably be at some point during early access that i would look into adding uh, other animals Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I quite I quite like the idea of having more animals. So I hope that I love those chickens. Yeah. I harass them like crazy when I was playing <laughs> the game. They are very cute. <laughs> and they run away when I chase them. I freaking love it. <laughs> but um uh, Lily also asks, uh will there be seasons? Um actually specifically seasonal events or holidays in the town. I would like to add that in the future, yeah, because we have like a calendar in game and I want to add some like specific events that would happen on like, you know, maybe like once every day of the week or once every season. Um, I think these would be really fun, but events are a lot of work to set up. So it's something that would be added probably like later on during early access. Uh, I don't think it's going to be there from the start of early access. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it would be cool to have like some sort of like Halloween or you know, like Christmas events or something in the spring. Um, maybe like there would be like unique uh, equipment that you can buy for your horse to kind of like dress them up or things like that. Maybe like horse competitions that only happen during those events. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think there there's a lot of fun things yeah. that could be added there. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Veronica, or Veronica, sorry, asks if in the future, can we change our furniture inside the house or put decoration inside or outside the barn? Yeah, um, that's something that I would like to add, but I don't think it will be like something that you can customize, you know, like in The Sims or something like that. Like it's not going to be super in-depth, mm -hmm. but maybe like changing like the, the theme of your house and changing the furniture to a different style. Um, you are going to be able to upgrade your house. So make it better, bigger and add like a kitchen or have like a closed bedroom and things like that. So you are going to be able to do that um, and just have more space in general. But for the furniture, I I don't want to confirm anything for that yet, but I, I do agree that customization would be fun yeah no definitely <laughs> so uh, mask g asks uh 
Oh, where am I? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mask G asks, can we have the same clothing as the villagers? I'm in love with Aisha's and Madeline's clothes. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you like the, the villager outfits and everything. Uh, I do agree that they look very cute. Um, there are going to be more outfits in the game. Probably not like exactly the same as the villagers so that you look a little bit different from them. Um, but later on in the game, there's going to be a new villager that's going to be added. That's the tailor. Um, and she's going to have like a boutique where she sells a bunch of different outfits and like hats and different shoes and things like that. So you're going to be able to customize your character a lot more. Um, but I have to say that you are not going to be able to have like dresses or skirts because making those work on like a horse and like horse riding animation with skirts is just very complicated and it probably wouldn't look good so uh it's gonna have to be like pets and shorts and things like that but i still want to add a lot of like options and colors for that i got two words for you side saddle there you go <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, that would look pretty cool. That would actually. Eh? <laughs> so uh, Emma Wagner asks, uh, will it come out on Mac? Um, for now, I can only say that it's going to come out on like Windows PC. Uh, Mac is a possibility, but it's not going to be for like the demo or during the early access. Um, if I do release on, you know, like other platforms, it's going to be uh, with the full release, like when the game is completely done. Okay. Cool. Silverheart asks, because I think I probably you have had this question as well. We did cover it briefly, but I'm just going <laughs> to ask it again. Will there ever be any new breeds added to the game? Um, no, I don't think so for, for other breeds. Um, but I'm going to add just a lot of like coat colors and patterns. Like basically anything that people request, I can probably add it in the game. Um, so hopefully that's going to help a little bit um but the main breed that we have in the game is kind of like the mustang um and it's most likely going to to stay with just that one. Oh, that's good i actually like them i think i like the mustang because it's it's actually not a breed that you see a lot in horse games ironically you know mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's such a yeah. breed though <laughs> okay so kananaki asks uh, this is actually an interesting one. She asks, is horse training going to make profit? So she says that in a lot of horse games, training and horses, I'm sorry, training horses and then selling them is a loss of money. So is this horse game going, to, horse training going to make profit? Uh, I definitely want it to. Um, it's already kind of included in the demo that if you buy a horse and you train it and you sell it again, you're going to sell it for more than what you bought it for. Um, because like the the value of the horse is based on their skill level um the only issue with that is that right now i don't think it's very balanced for the amount of money that you gain for the time that it takes to train a horse um so i, I do want to review that in the future to make training and selling horses a more like viable option um i think it would also be interesting if you could have kind of like a quest or like a like a side quest from uh, the trainer, River in town, where she would ask you to like train a specific horse for money oh, wow. or where she would request like a horse. Like, let's say she would say, um, oh, I have like a, a client that is looking for like a bay horse with a splash pattern that has at least like 50% in, in gem skill. Okay. And if you get that horse and, and sell it to her, then you would earn like a lot more money than you would at the auction house. So you would like train specific horses for her. That's not like in the game right now, but it's something I think would be uh, would be really fun. Oh, yeah, no, I, I love that idea. Geminis... Oh, can I pronounce this? <laughs> Geminis <Yeah>. real. <laughs> I, think, I think I got that right. <laughs> Let me just check if I, just check if I copy that one correctly. Yes, Geminis real. Okay, here we go. D Why do people have these weird names? <laughs> Gemin... I think it's Gemini... <laughs> G G Gemini's trial. Oh, there we go. Gemini's <laughs> trial. I got it. Okay. <laughs> so Gemini's trial asks, will horse coats ever evolve as the horses age? You know, like gray, dapples, roan, sabinos, etc. Um, I don't think so. The coats are probably just going to stay the same um, for the horse. And the thing is also that the, the horse is like, age goes from a fall to yearling to adult and then they just stay an adult so there isn't like really like an old horse stage um yeah so yes most likely the coats are just going to be like permanent permanently the same okay so the final question is actually from me uh, i have two for you number one <laughs> is do we know when the early access is going to come out um so early access is spring 2023 and just to be like a bit more clear because i know the seasons can be different in like different uh hemisphere mm -hmm. um so that would be between march 21 and june 21 
Um, so I don't want to give like a more specific date just yet. Um, because I wanted first to do like demo and get the feedback and see like uh, how much people are enjoying the game and like how much um, things I need to rework before I start adding like more features to the game. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty soon. And uh, after that, I, I'm probably going to keep the game in early access for like at least a year, um, possibly like up to two. But I don't want it to be much longer than that because then I feel like it's like dragging on a little bit too much. Um, but I'm really excited to get into early access and start developing features and releasing them as I make them. Uh, I think it's just going to be really fun to like, you know, you, you start playing a game a little bit and then you like have like your horses, you can do breeding things like that. And then at some point, oh, like now there's wild horses, now there's a new area, now there's new competitions. Like, I don't know, I think it's going to be fun to go back to the game and like keep discovering more and more things over time yeah that's gonna be so cool i actually can't wait for it so uh you actually <laughs> asked you actually answered the uh, uh the uh, other question is like when the game will come out so that's gonna be from mm -hmm. now in about two years i'm gonna okay a maximum two years minimum um, like one year yeah. apparently like kind of in around about that age time you know with a couple of months added but um the final question is kind of how much will this game cost uh, I'm planning for the game to be $30 US or the recommended equivalent in other currencies mm. uh, from Steam. Um, but yeah, $30, there's probably going to be a discount at launch. I'm thinking of having that price for early access in a full release, but I, I'm not sure yet. Maybe it could be a little bit lower at the start of early access and then um, be raised for the full release or at some point during early access. Um, I'm not super set on that yet um, because usually I, I like to set my game prices based on um, the amount of content and the hours that you can spend in the game and things like that. Um, and the thing is that even just the demo is already very long. Like People are playing yeah. it a lot. So uh, even at the start of early access when there's going to be like breeding and you're going to be able to have like you know upgrade your stables have more horses and you're going to have like more areas and more quests like there's going to be a ton of content even at the start of early access um so <laughs> uh i'll see i'll see what uh, i want to do uh, when we get a bit closer to release okay awesome and uh, just a fun little question here um you are of course a single developer so there's a lot of people out there kind of finding inspiration in the fact that people can you know make games on their own and that's kind of inspiring you know a lot of young developers to kind of try and do this on their own so uh if you could give mm -hmm. them any advice uh, what would you give to like aspiring young developers who are trying to make a horse game on their own just <laughs> i mean that's that's a, a little difficult to give advice yeah it's a really big question um <laughs> no, no that's okay it's a good one um because it is really difficult to stay motivated when you're working on a game because it just takes so long and you have so many things to learn but you know i think the most important quality at the end of the day to make games is just um perseverance and you know just to keep working on a game when even when it feels like you're not making any progress and when it feels like it's just so many things to do like it's insurmountable um it is you can actually do it you can actually finish games if you just keep working on it uh you just have to be patient with yourself um but yeah i think the main thing for motivation that helps is actually sharing a game like posting about it online like whether that's like on youtube or tiktok or you know like social medias on discord uh just share your game and you know when you have people who say things like oh my god like that looks really good i'm really excited to play it like when are you releasing it like that can be a really great source of motivation because you're like oh like i actually like want to get this done so that they can they can play or at least for me that's like the main thing that like helps me keep working on the game it's like when i know that people are looking forward to it um but yeah just be patient with yourself and you know <laughs> give yourself time to to actually make a, a whole game because it it's not it's not like a quick process for sure yeah no definitely not but i think that's absolutely brilliant advice you know perseverance is absolutely key i think in most things but definitely in game development mm -hmm. because there are so many facets you have to keep in mind as you're trying to get them all to function together and all that but uh Eloise, thank you so so much for coming here on my uh on my podcast today i think it was an absolute pleasure having you here um you're an absolute inspiration and i think ranch of rivershine is shaping up to be an a, a brilliant little game uh so, and thank you for making it you know for sharing 
playing it with us and giving us a chance <laughs> to play it. I, I'm having a blast with it. Apparently, a lot of people are as well. And I look very much forward to the release date. Thank you so, so much. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It was a, a really fun interview. And I hope that for people who are interested in Rishine or who've played it already, this might give you like a better idea of what's to come and what the game is, is going to look like. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm always happy to talk about it and share more about it. So thank you for having me. And thank you uh, to people who also ask uh, some more questions. <laughs> thank you too okay thank you guys and have a great day bye bye you can just bye. say bye oh sorry say bye <laughs> <laughs> bye <laughs>